Hey y'all, welcome to week 21 of your first year of drum lessons, drum set edition. My name is Penny Larson and I am really happy to have you with me today. Today is going to be all about ghost notes. Boo! I'm sorry, all right. that's the one. I, I, I won't say boo anymore, well, I will try not to say boo anymore. Um, I am very silly with my sense of humor and, and I love making jokes about ghost notes being scary. They are in fact not scary, yay! Ghost notes are quiet notes, that's it. They are quiet notes that we play usually on the snare drum. You can have ghost notes on other voices too, but usually on the snare drum. We're gonna talk about ghost notes on the snare drum today. And what they do is fill out a groove, okay? They make it so this nice simple pattern sounds a little bit more three-dimensional. There are definitely times when you don't want to do ghost notes. There are times where you want the clean, powerful, simple information of a bass drum hit and a snare drum hit and a bass drum hit and a snare drum hit, and you just want that back and forth, and you know maybe a couple more bass drum notes, but you want a nice simple pattern and you want everything to be focused on that. Ghost notes are for those times where you want things to be a little bit more deep, have, have some more density to the, the, the groove quality, right? I use that term three-dimensional. A lot of times drum grooves are pretty much loud. The bass drum is loud, the snare drum is loud, the hi-hat is loudish, right? Ghost notes can be a way to add some, some kind of volume shading to what you're playing. Hopefully you're not playing just loud all the time, even without ghost notes, but a lot of drum beats are, just by their nature, everything that's going on is pretty powerful, and so ghost notes can help add like a second dynamic level. Today is gonna be a little different than the way we've been doing lessons low these last few weeks. We are going to have a handout because of course we are, but we're also going to talk about using this handout as a framework to go back to some of the patterns we've done before and also I'm going to give you like a sneak peek of what this concept can lead us to. If you think you don't know what ghost notes are, the list of drummers that I could tell you to listen to is pretty much as long as the list of drummers. If you think you don't know what ghost notes are, I think you're mistaken. The drummer that first perked my ear to ghost notes was John Bonham, but I'm having a difficult time thinking of drummers who don't play ghost notes, okay? So they're all over the place. So let's jump into the exercises and see how, see how that, can, uh, that can get us into playing them. So I said that they were quiet notes on the snare. The first thing we're gonna do is take our right hand and leave space for those quiet notes on the snare. So the handout will be available down below as a PDF, like always. Number one, I'm gonna play just our simple straight eighth rock beat, two and four on the snare, one and three on the kick. And I'm gonna play the hi-hat and snare with just my right hand, okay? Okay, super simple, right? Then what I'm gonna do is play my left hand on the snare drum very quietly. Everything else stays the same, okay? So my right hand is still gonna move from the hi-hat to the snare. One, two, three, four.
And like always, this stuff you should play at different tempos. I'm not going to do too much of that today because today's lesson is more conceptual than chopsy, right? Most of this stuff probably you already know how to do. We're just talking about how to apply it. If you noticed, I was trying to keep my left hand as quiet as I possibly can without being silly and useless. I can play quieter than that, but There comes a point where the snare drum almost doesn't sound like a snare drum anymore, and that's not what we want. You don't have to make these imperceptible. You just want them to be pretty quiet, okay? We write these, we write these in parentheses, and sometimes you can trick yourself into thinking that they're not really notes, and they're not really there, and shh. Boo, they're scary, right? They're ghost notes. But they, they are most of the time to be, there's that old phrase, um, they should be felt and not heard. And to a certain extent that's true, but if you can't hear them on the drum set, they won't even be felt in the music, okay? So keep them quiet, definitely, but don't be afraid to make it so you can at least hear them. Okay. So that was number two. Number three is an exercise that we did on Wednesday, okay? It was just right, left, right, left, together, left, right, left, right, left. And the thing I wanted to show you with that was we're going to do a quiet note with the left hand and then a loud and then a quiet. And getting the left hand up and down like that can be a bit of a challenge. So if you missed Wednesday's lesson, I encourage you to check that out. This is number three on our worksheet. And now my right hand is going to stay on the hi-hat and my left hand is going to play that extra note on two. So my right hand is going to go back to just playing eighth notes and then my left hand is going to play an extra note. Let's do this one at a couple different tempos so you can see how that works. Let's do it a little slow at first. One, two, Three and a four and a. Okay, and a little faster. One, two, three, and a four, and a. See if we can't do it a little bit faster than that. One, two, three, and a four, and a. Yeah, see, a couple times it got a little bit away from me, but that's basically the idea. We're trying to go from soft, loud, soft. But I have really good news, and that is most of the time when you're playing ghost notes, you're not going to do one right after the snare, and you usually won't even do one right before the snare. And that leads us to number four. Number four has a ghost note on the E after one, the uh after two, and then the e after three, and the uh after four. So I'm leaving space surrounding the accent on the snare drum. 
This is for two reasons, honestly, that this usually happens. It's easier to play, so sure. So like as you're learning this stuff, this is probably a pattern you might have stumbled upon, right? But also, when the ghost notes are crammed up to the snare accent, instead of making the groove sound more rich and interesting and three-dimensional, they can make it sound thick and muddy, right? And, and they can make the groove lose some clarity. And that's the last thing we're going for, right? We, we, no matter whether we're playing ghost notes or whatever we're playing, we, we, wanna, we wanna have some clarity in our playing. And, you know, there's an exception to everything I tell you ever. So sure, sometimes you might want something to sound thick and muddy as long as you're doing that on purpose. If it sounds thick and muddy because that's the only thing you can do, that's a problem. But the whole point is if you can play with clarity, you should also then be able to control it enough to play thick and muddy, right? So I'm gonna, I'm gonna preach playing with clarity in, with the recognition that you can also play, once you can play with clarity, playing with some thick and grit and sloppiness is a thing you can add, okay? So let's try number four. Do this at a couple tempos, I guess, just so you can see. One, two, three, and a four, and a... and a little faster. One, two, three, four. Okay, we're gonna talk about some applications to this, but before we even do that, this rhythmic pattern, the sticking pattern, you can use as not ghost notes. One of my favorite examples of that is from, um, Dick DiCenzo has an example in his book, uh, A Practical Workbook for the Modern Drummer, which we'll talk about at some point, because heck yeah, we will. And you take those notes and you put them on the floor tom, and then you have like a boogaloo beat, right? So I'm also gonna move the the bass drum to the and instead of the on the beat on three. But that simple change, and suddenly I have this. One, two, three, four. So even though we're playing these patterns as goat's notes, there are other ways for you to apply them, right? Okay, so let's talk about that application. I've got my hand part now. I'm gonna do this over and over again. Two, three, four. Okay, and that's my ostinato we're gonna use if we haven't used the word ostinato before, that is just a short repeating phrase, usually a rhythmic pattern. Drummers talk about them a lot. There's a lot of ostinatos that we do in drum music. We could argue that just playing eighth notes on a hi-hat functions as an ostinato, but usually there has to be something else going on. Usually it's not just a series of repeating notes, but it's a pattern. And so our pattern is that right and left hand pattern that we were doing. And now what we're gonna do, and I'm gonna do this from memory or creativity if you want, because I'm not even guaranteeing to play any of the examples that we've done precisely like they were. But go back to your handouts that we've done and just play, take the bass drum patterns and play them along with this hand pattern. 
and I'll do a few for you. So what I'm going to do is I will just keep playing and I'm going to change up my bass drum pattern every four bars. And maybe I'll play like a simple fill just to, just to signal you that I'm making a change. Okay? But this is the type of thing you want to do. You want to take this hand pattern and then play different bass patterns with it. Okay? So, one, two, three, four. But when the real fun comes is when you've been through a few of these patterns and you can leave out the ghost notes or add the ghost notes. So remember in number three, I said we're taking some of those out, but when we got to number four, but we can put some back in. Also, a thing that I love to do is do a quick little double with my ghost note, a drag sometimes, depending on how it is. Sometimes it's just a double sixteenth and sometimes it's a 32nd. Let me show you a couple of those first. So the double 16th will end up sounding like this. One, two, three, four. Right, that's when I love, doom, 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 bop, doom, 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 bop. Especially with the simple bass drum, I'm adding a lot of rhythmic interest to the, to, what's, to the drum part without adding more on the bottom end. I'm adding it more in that mid-range and, and a little bit more snap on top. The drag is going to sound like this. Two, three, four. Now, I don't usually do this too much in these lessons, but we're kind of at a point now where this one page changes everything we've done up until now. And so what I'm going to do is just play a little bit freely and show you how I use ghost notes in this straight eighth kind of feel. We're going to talk about triplets and shuffles in a second, but for now, this is, the, this is a straight eighth kind of feel. I won't get too crazy. But this is some of, you know, some songs that I've learned and some parts that I've written and stuff I like to play with ghost notes. And I'll start with the pattern we're doing here, but then I'll take it out a little bit. One, two, three, four. Okay, so right, as soon as we can add ghost notes, everything gets more interesting, it can get more complicated for good and bad, right? But there's a lot more, there's just a lot more choices. 
I'm going to do one more thing before we get on to the triplets. I'm going to go back and forth between playing ghost notes and no ghost notes. Remember how at the beginning I said sometimes you might want to play no ghost notes. So let's see what ghost notes do to a B. And I'll try and do a couple patterns that then I'll add ghost notes to. Okay? And I, I won't stop. I'll just play a fill and that'll be the sign that I'm going to change, right? One, two, three, four. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sort of figuring that one out as I go, right? Um, the first two, I think, made real sense to me. That last one, if we weren't doing a lesson, I would probably take 10 or 15 minutes right now to figure that out, <laughs> um, to figure out some, like I can feel it, you know, on the tip of my brain, but, um, but I think you get the idea, right? So how we go from we go from a beat and we throw in ghost notes and you pick and choose, right? Not, not all the time will all the ghost notes that we learned, you'll want to put them in. You might put in one ghost note and a measure and that suddenly takes it from being, it's an okay groove to something magical, right? Don't feel like you need to put ghost notes in like crazy, you know, just because somebody did, right? Um, I'm not, I'm not teasing about the part about sometimes you don't want to do any ghost notes, right? John Bonham, who I mentioned earlier, who's the person that kind of introduced me to ghost notes as a, as a concept when I was, when I was, I was just a wee lass. Um, he, he has tons of songs where he plays no ghost notes, right? So it's not, it's not, it's not an all the time thing. This isn't like a oh, I will sprinkle this into my playing and suddenly my playing will be better. It's a, I have given you a new seasoning for your cooking, right? You wouldn't want to use sage in every recipe you make. That's ghost notes. Okay, so now let's talk about how they work with triplets. It's the same kind of idea, right? So back to our sheet. Number five is we're, we're going to start our triplets. And we're going to start with the same kind of idea. I'm going to play the whole thing with my right hand first and then play the shuffle and then play the shuffle with the ghost notes and then a halftime shuffle. Okay. We'll talk about, there's a step I left out in here too because um, I'm trusting you guys more and more to, to play stuff without me writing every last little thing down especially since it's, we're kind of going to mimic one of the things earlier on. Okay, so remember we're in 12-8 because that's how we're going to feel triplets. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, triplet, 2, triplet, 3, triplet, 4, triplet, 1, and a 2, and a 3, and a 4, and a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 1, right? Okay, so number 5, we're back to just my right hand. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, super simple, right? I have good news. The lesson that we did on Wednesday 
we used 16th note triplets. On the drum set, we're going to use 8th note triplets. So if you were practicing that up down really quick with your left hand, with the 16th note triplets, your left hand should be totally ready for the 8th note triplets. So we're not even going to spend too much time talking about just straight triplets like that. You can totally use ghost notes in a straight triplet groove, but I want to get to the shuffle feel, right? And so let's do the same thing. I'm going to play just my right hand. This isn't on the sheet, right? This would be one, a two, a three, a four, a... And now we're going to go back to the eighth note triplet feel and I'm going to play my left hand to fill in the triplet, right? So, so number seven, I'm going to have just one ghost note on the trip, the middle, the second partial of the triplet on beat one and beat three. And that sounds like this. One, two, uh, three, uh, four. Sometimes you do want to do that ghost note after beat two and beat four. This one isn't written in, but this is going to be using that down, loud, soft thing that we worked on on Wednesday. Two, three, uh, four, uh. So I'll tell you truly, I almost never use that. I'm not super excited about how that sounds. Um, even when I hear other drummers do it, a lot of times I think, wow, what a cool display of dexterity. But I rarely think, wow, that makes awesome musical sense. I mean, some notable exceptions are like David Garibaldi, right, with Tower of Power. Um, he's kind of like a ghost note machine. He can put ghost notes anywhere he wants and, <laughs> and they sound musical. Um, so, you know, don't, don't just take my word for it. This is, this is clearly, this is, uh, sorry, purely an aesthetic point. Learn to play these. I certainly play these sometimes, but when I'm like writing my drum parts for my band, say, I, I don't hear these naturally, right? So lastly, number eight, we're going to use a halftime shuffle. Halftime is just when you take a groove and the tempo stays the same and your rhythmic subdivision stays the same, but you cut your bass drum and your snare drum in half. And so the whole thing feels like it slowed down, kind of, even though it didn't. A lot of times this is a way to make a tempo sound more relaxed than it otherwise might. We'll talk a little bit more about halftime in future lessons, but I couldn't go past ghost notes without talking about the halftime shuffle with ghost notes. Uh, let me play it for you without ghost notes first. I'm going to go back and forth between the regular time and the halftime just so you can see what I'm talking about. My right hand is going to stay the same. My bass drum and snare will change. And I'll do patterns of four bars back and forth just so you can see how the feel changes. One, two, a three, a four. A
crazy, right? I mean, the, the way that you can affect the, totally the way the time feels just by spacing out your bass drum and snare drum is mind boggling to me. Time feel is such a heavy concept, right? Okay, so now the ghost notes in typical halftime shuffle land are gonna be the trip after one, the trip after two, and the trip after four. So like this, this is number eight. One, two, uh, three, uh, four. So instead of playing, you can do the same thing with this example that we did with number four, right? You can add your bass drum patterns that we've done before. Uh, let, me, let me play you like one or two real quick. Um, one, two, a three, a four. Okay, so that was basically the pattern from like Fool in the Rain, which is based on the, the Purdy Shuffle by Bernard Purdy, um, similar to the Rosanna Groove by Jeff Porcaro. Um, there's some open hi-hat stuff going on in those beats that, sure, let me play. So this is Fool in the Rain. Um, if you don't know Fool in the Rain by Led Zeppelin, I mean, it seems like most of my viewership is pretty close to my age, so you all know Fool in the Rain, right? But let me, so all I'm going to do is add a hi-hat, an open hi-hat to what I was just doing, and I get this, two, three, a four. Right, so not bad. I have this theory that most of the cool drum beats you know are, you know that old Six Degrees of Separation thing with the movie with Kevin Bacon and how everyone in the world is connected by like six steps to everyone else in the world, right? Um, I don't know if that's true. It's a really interesting concept. I have this theory that most of the coolest drum beats that you know are connected to that very simple boom, bap, boom, bap by just a few steps, right? You add something here, you add something there, you take something away, and suddenly you have something totally new that really at its skeleton is something you know really well. One of the reasons I've justified myself going into, you know, showing you Fool in the Rain in your first year of drum lessons is because all of these pieces build together to make these finished prod products, right? If you can play this page with the ghost notes, that one down the bottom, number eight, to get to Fool in the Rain, I'm adding three bass drum notes and one open hi-hat. That's it, right? So if you can play number eight another few hours and you should be able to play Fool in the Rain. And, you know, it might be halting at first. You might, you know, it, it might feel really awkward at first, but okay, welcome to learning. That's how it's supposed to go, right? So, so one of the reasons I, I'm kind of pushing that first year envelope, right, is because the stuff is all connected, right? We're just adding, add this and add that and add that, and suddenly you're playing, you know, something really crazy. I want to show you two more things before we go because 
This is turning into a longer lesson than I anticipated. Two of my favorite grooves, and I want to show you how the ghost notes really make these beats shine. One is a tune by the Dixie Dregs called Divided We Stand, and it is, it's a little bit different than the shuffle we've been playing. Rod is just playing triplets back and forth. And if you notice, right, we've talked about this before, triplets, I've got groups of three notes with two hands, so suddenly I've got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Right, so that's how I'm doing the ghost note there. And I'm just gonna play my right foot with my right hand on the one and the three. And then I'm gonna double my left hand and make it a drag on the ghost notes. Two, three, four. And then I'm going to throw in some extra stuff. This is going to be the groove as it is from Divided We Stand by the Dixie Dregs, drum beat by Rod Morgenstein, right? So, and also if you don't know Rod Morgenstein, check out Rod Morgenstein. Rod was sweet enough to let me, uh, I have his instructional video from the 80s on my, on my channel um, with his blessing, which is very sweet of him. Um, so check that out. It, it remains one of the best instructional videos I've ever seen. Um, it's a nice kind of sampler. It's called putting it all together, right? There's just tons of great information in like an hour, right? So this beat, I think he plays this beat on that video actually. So go and watch him play it better. But here's how, <laughs> here's how I play it. Um, two, three, four. Right, so suddenly now, that's just ghost notes and, and you know, a little open hi-hat there and a little sprinkle there and, you know, you can take what we've done today and get to these kind of neat sounding beats with just a few steps, right? The last thing I want to show you today, and I apologize, um, we're going to talk about this really briefly because I, I don't want to open this can of worms fully yet, but... The double bass shuffle, like Hot for Teacher, um, uh, Space Boogie by Jeff Beck, um, uh, Patchwork by the Dixie Dregs, Cruise Missile by the Steve Morse Band, right? I mean, there's a million examples of this, of this groove. I'm, I play it right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So my left foot is playing on the beat and my right foot is playing the uhs, except for the first one. I start with my right foot, and then right, right, left, right, left, right, left, one, a two, a three, a four, a one. And the pattern I'm gonna play with my right hand is ding, ding, da, ding, ding, da, ding, ding, da, ding, like the jazz rag, which we haven't talked about yet, but you have to have heard the rhythm, ding, ding, da, ding, ding, da, ding. And then I'm just gonna play two and four on my snare drum. So without any ghost notes, it sounds like this. One, two, three, four. Which sounds cool, right? But I'm just gonna add one ghost note. I'll do it first at that same tempo and then I'll do it a little faster. Oh, I forgot to mention, there's a hyperspace tune, my band, Run For Your Life, which has this groove as well. 
So here's that same tempo now with the ghost note. One, two, three, four. And now let me play that for you a little faster. I'll take the ghost note in and out while I'm playing it so you can see how it really affects how the groove feels. Ah, one, two, one, two. Okay, so it's crazy, right? That beat is my favorite example of turning the switch on and off with ghost notes because they really, I'll never forget, I was on tour in British Columbia oh, like 20 years ago. Oh my God, I'm so old, yay. Um, and there was this band sharing the bill with us. And I don't even remember how it came up, but the bass player was talking to me about about this beat from this hyperspace tune, Run For Your Life. And, and I showed it to him and he was like, I took out that ghost note and he was like, it, like it sort of melted his brain. He, it didn't make sense to him that that was all I was doing. Adding the ghost note suddenly makes the double bass shuffle feel like, I don't know, like, like a herd of something stampeding. A herd of drums, I guess, to be very corny. Um, okay, so that's gonna wrap us up for today. Um, today was a lot of like talking, a little bit less playing, but today is more conceptual, right? Once you learn these ghost notes, you can apply them to everything we've done so far. So don't be afraid to go back and apply them to everything we've done so far. Don't feel like you need to apply them to everything, but if You've picked out a couple favorite grooves that you have. Put ghost notes in. Now, if there's a song and you hear like a weird little snare thing and you always wondered, what the heck is going on there? Now, you know, ghost note, okay? There, honestly, I, when some of these patterns I was playing for you, I had to really control myself to not play ghost notes or, or to play them a certain way because they're just so instinctive to me at this point, right? And and that's how you want to get as a drummer. You want to get, you know, reactive. And, and so all the tools you have are always at your disposal. And so you're thinking musically, you're almost not thinking, right? You're just kind of playing and you're hearing and you're, and you're flowing. You're not thinking, right? Um, when I'm teaching, I have to be thinking and that's hard. I'm just a drummer after all. Teaching is so hard or thinking is so hard. See? So... <laughs> Okay, so, so that's going to wrap us up for today. This is the type of lesson I would love to hear any questions you have. Some of my favorite examples of ghost notes, I played a few of them for you, right? There's Fool in the Rain um, by Led Zeppelin, Rosanna by Toto, so the Led Zeppelin is John Bonham, Toto, that was Jeff Porcaro, uh, Space Boogie by uh, Jeff Beck, which is Simon Phillips on drums, um, Divided We Stand, and um, Patchwork by the Dixie Dregs, which is Rod Morgenstein, and then Cruise Missile uh, by the Steve Morse Band, which is also Rod Morgenstein. But there's a million. Um, Sarah Bareilles has this great tune, uh, Vegas, that has some amazing just snare work. Um, and I always forget who that is on drums. Oh, I'm going to hell. Um, right, but I mean, there's just so much good music with ghost notes. Seek it out and now try and try and listen, right? And um, y you know, figure out where ghost notes can go and where they shouldn't go, right? Because 
like I say, as much as I was saying, it's easy for me to just kind of like lose myself and add ghost notes. I'm really trying to be sensitive to whether they make sense or not, right? Because sometimes they don't. Okay, this was a talky lesson. I will let you all go. I hope you have a great weekend. Um, I apologize again for the not perfect regularity of our lessons lately. Um, I promise I'm doing my best. Um, I love you guys very much. Um, it'd be great to see you on Instagram and Facebook too. I'm at Penny Larson Drums at both of those places. And I hope you all are still doing well and staying healthy and figuring out how to get through this crazy, crazy, crazy year that the universe has decided to throw at us this year. And um, I love you all very much. I will see you next week. Have a good weekend. Love you guys. Bye.